Unless you have an unusually long neck and got teased about it at school, you've probably not thought about this part of your body for more than two seconds, especially its compartments. But clinically, compartments of the neck are very important because they provide potential routes of infection between the head and the rest of the body. In this tutorial, we will be discussing the cervical fascia and the compartments of the neck. For this tutorial on compartments of the neck, we'll be looking at this transverse section through the neck. We'll begin by identifying different layers of fascia in the neck, specifically the superficial layer and the deep layer, which is further subdivided into the superficial, middle and deep layers, with the carotid sheath sometimes identified as a separate division. For easier reference, the superficial layer of cervical fascia is also simply called the superficial cervical fascia, while the deep layer is commonly referred to as the deep cervical fascia. We will take a look at the subdivisions and compartments each of these layers form. We'll start with the superficial layer of cervical fascia, which is actually the subcutaneous tissue of the neck. Simple as it is, it'll allow us to jump right into the subdivisions of the deep layer of the cervical fascia, which are the superficial, middle and deep layers. First, there is the superficial layer of deep cervical fascia which is associated with the muscles immediately deep to the skin. We'll then move on to the middle layer of the deep cervical fascia, which is subdivided into the strap muscle fascia, the visceral fascia, the buccopharyngeal fascia, forming the visceral compartment, and the retropharyngeal space. We'll then tackle the deep layer of the deep cervical fascia, with special emphasis on one of its parts called the alar fascia, which contributes to the bounding of two cervical spaces the danger space and the vertebral compartment. We'll finally tackle the carotid sheath and the vascular compartment it forms. Finally, we will of course finish up with some clinical notes. Before we get into the juicy stuff, let's take a general overview of the cross-section that we're looking at today. We're used to looking at anatomical structures from the anterior, posterior, lateral or medial aspect. So working with the cross-section can feel a bit unfamiliar. Let's spend a minute familiarising ourselves with the image we'll be working with today. First up, bang in the middle, we have a cervical vertebra. Even if we didn't already know we were looking at the cervical region, we can tell that this is a cervical vertebra because of its typical bifid spine and the grooves for spinal nerves on the transverse processes. The cervical vertebra is also a good indicator of the orientation of this transverse section. We know that the vertebral spine projects posteriorly, and the vertebral body faces anteriorly, which means the anterior aspect of the neck is at the top of the image and the posterior aspect is at the bottom. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.